Good morning. morning. And a Merry Christmas to you. Thank you for for coming and sharing this morning uh, and this worship service with us. Uh, It's actually really a special thing, right? Not many uh, churches have a Christmas morning service, and and, uh, I know that it takes a little bit of effort to get up Christmas morning and have to put your actual clothes on, right? Uh, most of us want to probably just come in our PJs. So, it, but I appreciate you being here. I do have one announcement. Um, last night, Bill came and, and visited me right before this service, and he told me that Hildegard had a heart attack uh, a few days ago. Well, it's, I think it's longer than that. I think it's been maybe four or five days. And they didn't go in, they didn't do anything, and then she start, or maybe they did. I don't, I'm not. He didn't really explain that, but what he did explain is that she was having complications afterwards, so she was getting dizzy, she was uh, like being cold, she had like chills, and then she fell, and so they had to take her into the hospital because of the fall, and it was all the, all of that was because of the heart attack, and so they sent her down, she's in um, Champaign right now, and what they found out is that uh, she's got one valve that's completely shut, and then another valve that's leaking in her heart. And um, obviously, she's too old to have surgery. So they, she has to be there for a little while longer in Champaign. And then on like the 26th or the 27th, they're going to be moving her here at, uh, I believe it was Watsika, if, if that's the first place that's available or, or their preferred place. And at that point, they're just going to see if she can rehil- rehabilitate there and see how well that goes. Um, For those of you who have lost a spouse, you know what that's like. It's not easy for anybody. It doesn't matter if you've been married for one year, if you've been married for however long they've been married. I don't even remember what their anniversary number was, but Bill's a pretty strong guy, right? Uh, Just in general, as a man. And he was fighting as hard as he could. I could see it in his face not to, to shed tears when he was talking to me. But you could also see behind that effort um, sadness, right? And fear a little bit. And not that they don't believe in God. That's not what I'm saying. But the reality of the situation. So would you guys please be in prayer for her? And we know that God's will will you know, however that comes out, you know, but uh, Bill, Bill, Bill needs extra prayers just as much as Hildegard does, so be praying for their family, please. Um, are there any other announcements? Christ is born today, that thing? Okay. Our cardinal worship today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 and through 55 which is a responsive reading. If you want to follow along in the hymnal, you can on page 147. Otherwise, you can uh, follow along on the board. On the board. <clears throat> and the congregation will read the bold. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation towards those who fear him. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, and he has exalted those who were humbled. He has has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy. Let's pray here before we light the candle this morning. Lord, thank you for this time. What a beautiful morning it is. We're not just excited about getting gifts, Lord. We're not just excited to to sing. We're not just excited about all the season. But but Lord, we're we're excited that, that in you, Lord, we find our move, our meaning, 
and who we are. How can we not be excited at the celebration of your birth? The pivot of all time rests in your manger. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies and your love. May you be glorified in this service, Lord, and hear our prayers and our worship to you. In your holy name, amen. And call on Brecken to come light the candle. The Christ candle is our last candle in this season. Um, and it's almost obvious, right? I don't even know if I need to explain it, but the white is for the purity, right? The perfect, spotless lamb. Perfect, perfection in all ways. And it's lit with light, like the light of the world who shone in the darkness. Please light the candle. You'll get it. Don't give up. Just like Christ never gave up on us, don't do it. That light has to be lit, right? All right. Thank you, Brecken. You can go now. Would you guys all please rise? And I've already had the opening prayer. Please rise and sing together our opening hymn. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Number 18. In the Old Testament, before the priests could go into the Holy of Holies and go into the place where uh, the altar was uh, and do any kind of sacrifice or present anything on behalf of the people, they first had to cleanse themselves, lest they die. That was a requirement by God, and it was to show that before me only the people who have been pure and holy can enter. And in that way, we can be reminded that we need the same thing. 
So let us confess our sins before Christ today. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, Grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the declaration of grace and absolution this morning. If this be your sincere confession, and if with penitent hearts you earnestly desire the forgiveness of your sins, for the sake of Jesus Christ, God, according to his promise, forgives you all your sins, and by the authority of God's word, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you that God, through his grace, has forgiven all your sins. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to call on the scripture reader at this time. The Old Testament lesson today comes from Exodus chapter 40, verses 17 through 21 and 34 through 38. In the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles and raised up its pillars. And he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark and put the poles on the ark and set the mercy seat above on the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. The New Testament lesson is from Titus chapter 3, verses 4-7. through 7. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. So if you are remembering there the Old Testament lesson, uh, I think in my mind for a long time until I remember reading this passage, and it wasn't today, but it was earlier, but uh, I always thought of the cloud and the fire was just when he was leading them out into the wilderness, right? As, he, as they came out of Egypt. But in reality, that cloud and fire stayed with them. And it was what guided them as they were in the wilderness as it stayed in the tabernacle. That's pretty powerful uh, stuff right there. So when we pray, or when I pray, that the Lord would fill this place with his spirit and that he would be glorified, 
It's the same thing. That's what we're praying for. All right, so the gospel text today is also uh, some of the text for the message. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was one, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to uh, bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to, the, to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Here ends the reading. Today we'll be confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. If you'd like to follow along in the hymnal, it's on page 18. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. I'd like to bring to your attention one thing that we have just confessed. Again, remember that the Nicene Creed was a creed that was put together during the Council of Nicaea as Constantine was trying to stop the bickering uh, of what we believed in the different things, and, and he was trying to get the people to pay attention, I guess, and, and focus on one thing, and it was a... Anyway... They had the sense at that time, as they were creating the, con the, the confession, to say this line. And was crucified. No, sorry. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. 
Because it's not on man's testimony. Nobody was living at the time when this was written that actually saw with their own eyes that Christ rose again. Sometimes in a courtroom, right, that's what we want. We want eyewitness testimony so we know that it's true. But what they're saying here and what we're saying is that we don't need eyewitness testimony because what we have is Scripture, and Scripture stands alone. That's a great line. Let's sing together our hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, number 44. I suppose I should have turned this already on so that I would be ready. Who needs to be ready anyway, right? I've already read the, the passage that, will be, that I'll be speaking on today. So to begin, I, I wanted to know, what, what's your favorite superhero, right? What's your favorite superhero? For me, uh, it was Hulk for a really long time. <coughs> I love Hulk. I love watching him just smash stuff, right? Like inside of me, there's a Hulk that I have to hold back. And sometimes just watching him destroy stuff makes me feel better inside. And then, and then I would say that my ultimate favorite is Batman. Because I know I wish I could be rich like him, but, but the reality is he's just a man. And yet he's able to do some great stuff, right? And you just don't mess with Batman. That's how it is, right? I don't know what your idea of a hero looks like in your head. What, what does a hero look like? We've seen you know, or heard stories of men who fall on grenades to save their comrades. There's all different men and women who run to the face of danger, right, without looking back. Men who will run into a burning building. That's just insanity. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In Colorado, there's, uh, and it's been a sculpture kind of area for quite some time because there were a few very famous sculpture makers that would make sculptures that would go around the world, and they were stationed there in Loveland. And some of the stuff that they make is just phenomenal. And most of it's bronze sculpture stuff. I can't imagine what that's like to try to make a mold and pour that bronze and, and do everything that they have to do to create those statues. So, so if you ever go to Loveland, if you're ever driving through Loveland, you know that's where I grew up in Colorado, and you have to drive through there to go to Estes Park for the fly convention. If you ever get an opportunity, you got some extra time, they have a sculpture garden there. But you also notice that almost every major building of any kind in the area has sculptures outside of it. And when they make that, to me, I'm reminded of the idea of Christ creating everything, right? I mean, it's kind of small in comparison, but there's a difference between that sculpture maker making a sculpture and me making a sculpture. This is me. Beautiful. When they do something, it's way better. When God created the heavens and the earth, we read in Genesis, it's perfect. There's, there's no better maker. There's no better planner. When you make something, it goes after a plan, right? So, You've never made cookies before. You decide you're going to make cookies. You're right. I don't make cookies. I eat cookies. So thankful for those people who make them. But would you just be like, eh, a little bit of this? I, you know, some of the people in here, younger, really younger. Well, actually, they're not really younger because it was, I think it was Cooper that I, that, that I said this to. They don't know who the cook is from the Muppets. How can you know what the cook is, right? But, but if you're going to make something you never made it before, is that what it's going to look like? The Muppet cook? You know, that's not going to work. What's going to come out? It's not going to be a cookie. And it's going to taste not like a cookie. It has to go to plan. God's plan is perfect. Not one thing is made without Christ having his hand in there. Look at the craziness of that statement for a second. In your mother's womb, you were knitted together by Christ. God knitted himself together. Isn't that interesting? As Christ was made, he was begotten, but when he became man and he was in the womb, as he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, as he grew as a... What do they call that again, Brandy? The baby before it's a baby? The fetus, there we go. I was thinking of something else. As he was a fetus, God is... God is knitting himself together. Nothing is made and not created without, without him. So he's literally doing the work there. If you were going to plan what you needed and how things should go, don't you want the best planner? I mean, John and Kylie... You guys wanted a great wedding, right? What'd you do? What am I asking? Planet. Yeah, okay, that's good. Who did you get to plan it? That's right! <laughs> A1 choice right there, right? When Christ goes before the foundations of the world that we were chosen in Him, 
Knowing what would take place as Genesis 3.15 all of a sudden comes to fruition, Christ himself goes, I know what it's going to take. I know what I need. And he's the one who does that. He not only planned it, he put it together. If you want a hero, sometimes we think of a hero that, you know, is last minute, right? They may have a good heart. Obviously, you know, the evil guy is not going to fall on a grenade for everybody. It's the guy with a good heart, right? But that's still kind of last minute. God was prepared. God created. God ordained. God designed. God planned. And then he expedited in him was life, and the life was the light of men. If you believe, and you have Christ, and you don't have life, I'm going to challenge that it, are you really holding on to Christ? This was my problem in my life. I was a Christian. I was a believer. I believed I was saved. But I never lived in a life where Christ was my life, where he lived in and through me, where I surrendered every day, where I said, Lord, I'm not going to be the one in charge, but you are. You plan it out. You do it. Because I'm tired of trying and failing every day. I need something more. That more is life. That more is complete surrender to Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Wouldn't it be nice if the Cubs or the Bears just had a perfect season? Wouldn't it be nice if they were always victorious? Wouldn't it be nice if they were the Packers? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That stings a little, doesn't it? Oh, man. Christ's victory record is perfect. So if you're going to get in the ring and you're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody, when you're going before that person, you're getting ready to get in the ring, how many people would be like, yeah, I want to go, into the, go in the ring with somebody who's never lost? <sighs> Especially if there's a lot of record there, like say from eternity. In fact, might I say that if you're going to challenge God in that way, you're absolutely foolish. Maybe you're following the king of foolishness. So, do you guys remember in the Christmas story, Ralphie's waiting forever to get that special coin from the Ovaltine, right? Do you guys remember that? He gets so excited, he gets into the mail, finally, oh, it's great. And of course, if you're like Ralphie in your home, you got to find a, a private place to take care of your business, right? He goes right to the bathroom. That's an old movie. I don't understand that because I go to the bathroom and everybody follows me in there. He goes in there. He gets it all done. He, he finds out it's a sham. He's so upset, right? And, and, and can you imagine like, the newest version of your comic superhero comic comes out. It's so anticipated. You're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then finally you go to the comic store. There it is. Oh, it's in its plastic. And you take it home, right? And, and you get into the bathroom because you want nobody to bother you. And, you. and you peel apart the plastic and you can smell that new print smell. Ooh, that's nice. And then you start 
devouring it, right? Oh, and full of action and oh, oh. And then the climax, the, the peak part, the, the, the new hero is revealed. And oh, a baby? What? What is this? And you're thinking of a superhero. The last thing you think of is a baby, right? What can a baby do? Well, if it's Christ, in the end, he can do everything. I don't know what you think of as you think of a hero. Tina Turner had it right when she said, we don't need another hero. But she completely had it wrong in the next line where she says, we don't need a way home. Because for us, the hero is the way home. As we celebrate Christ today, let us be reminded that he's everything. He's the only thing. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way to the Father but through Him. Perfect. Perfection. Let us believe today. Hold tight. Hold tight to the mercy and the glory of the cross, of the manger, the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Please pray with me. Thank you, God. Thank you that all the infinite power, the majesty, the glory, the divinity of God in that little, tiny living space. May nobody ever challenge your capability. When we wonder, Lord, if you're listening, if you're there, do you care? Well, you cared enough to be a baby, to be victorious when everything else failed. Because in reality, all those other things were just pointing to you. Because they can never match your victory. We're thankful for you this morning. We celebrate your birth, Lord. In your holy name, amen.
music for you that the confirmation students have been putting together. This is where they're supposed to be coming up, but, you know, kids their age have to be like, hello, we're starting now. Now, when I was talking about planning, this is, this is what happens when you don't pay attention to your planning. I have music because I don't have the words memorized as we sing. And then I use those words for a demonstration. And now I have to use that to sing from. So you got two demonstrations from that. That's okay. Oh, oh you're so nice. During the, the offering, I, it's my fault. We're starting the offering now.
Please rise. For your birth. Be with each family as they celebrate, Lord, and don't let the family be separated. Do not let Satan have his way. May he not separate the congregation. May he not separate families, Lord. Be with each one who could not be here today, all those who are sick, those who are ailing, Lord. Be with Bill and Hildegard today. We pray for all these things in your name. Amen. Please be seated. Dearly beloved, as we propose to come to the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, we should carefully examine ourselves as St. Paul exhorts us. For this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort and strengthening of those who humbly confess their sins and who hunger and thirst after righteousness. But if we do examine ourselves, we shall find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we cannot set ourselves free. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us and has taken on himself our nature, that, we, that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and for our deliverance suffer death, and all that we through our sins deserve. And to the end that we should confidently believe this and be strengthened by our faith, he has instituted the holy sacrament of his supper in which he feeds us with his body and gives us to drink of his blood. Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup, firmly believing the words of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, of his death and how he was delivered for our sins and raised for our justification. And with grateful hearts, we should take up our cross and follow him. And according to his commandment, love one another even as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are partakers of this one bread and drink of this one cup. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had eaten, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The table has been prepared. We'll call on the ushers to usher you forward.
welcome to the Lord's table. As we celebrate Christmas today, receive the bread and wine and recognize you didn't earn it. All you do is receive it. Just like the gift of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who is now bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen you and preserve you with the true faith and everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen.
does not solidify this holy body and blood. Whereby this made full satisfaction for all your sin. May he strengthen you and preserve you.
Please rise and receive the benediction. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by his grace, may he comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. And now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. May we not just sing this, but may this be the condition of your heart. Hymn number 34, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.